Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for a link to my Amazon store, where I've compiled some of the very best items available, including some of my own personal recommendations. Thanks! What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Quiet Carry Waypoint. Um, this is one of those knives where I didn't know that it existed and then I had a viewer bring it to my attention and uh, I, I was lucky enough actually to have at DTOM Knives and Gear send it to me for review. This is his Instagram and then this is his YouTube channel. He is a, a newer YouTube channel and he definitely deserves some more subs. Um, so, you know, before this uh, video ends or after it ends, whenever you want, go over to uh, D2M Knives and Gear on YouTube, give him a sub, check him out. Absolutely. Let's go ahead and support uh, some new channels. Very cool. Thank you so much for sending this guy along. He said, hey, do you want to check this out? And I said, yeah, absolutely. Because I was made aware of Quiet Carry Knives, like many of you, through Nick Shabazz when he did the drift and I thought wow that looks pretty cool and then you know I come come to find that uh, basically the combination of the steel and then the uh, titanium frame and then the liner um, make it essentially impervious to corrosion um, that's pretty cool that's very very interesting a completely uh, nearly impervious to corrosion knife um, and then the drift took a form that was um, you know much to my liking uh, and by that, I mean monochromatic and simple. I like stuff like that. So this, um, this was very interesting to me uh, and I'm really happy to uh, have an opportunity to talk about it. Let's go ahead and, well, first off, of course, let me thank my generous patrons. Thanks so much for supporting me during this time. If you'd like to get your hands on some of those cool stickers, check out the link in the description of my Patreon. Have a look around. If you'd like to support me, the, uh, that would absolutely mean the world to me. Overall length of the Quiet Carry Waypoint coming in at... Was right at seven and a half inches. Blade length coming in at three and a quarter and cutting edge coming in just shy of three and a quarter. Uh, so over the three uh, inch line for some people, but um, that's okay. Um, this is exactly what I would call a medium size knife. Like on the money, a medium size knife with a very slim and very lightweight uh, profile and weight overall. Let's do some size comparisons to uh, kind of give you an idea of what you're looking at here. Up against the Ontario Rat Model 1, Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? PM2 is coming in at 8.3 inches overall. How about up against the Benchmade Reptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue is coming in at 8 inches overall. And last but not least, the Spyderco Para 3. Spyderco Para 3 is coming in at 7 and a quarter inches overall. How's the action on this guy? Well, it's running on Phosphor Bronze. Give you a look here. This is very bright now that we've changed the lighting. Um, yeah, it's running on Phosphor Bronze. Sorry about the blurriness there. Very smooth though. Very responsive in terms of the placement of the, of the thumb studs and the detent. It's, oh my gosh, it's effortless. Right here, there's this nice scallop uh, for you to sort of uh, engage that thumb stud and then just with a little, oh, it's nice. Also the reverse flick. Oh, <laughs> fail. <laughs> there we go. Gosh, complex. Don't emphasize how easy it is if you can't even do it. Truthfully, it is very easy. This is one of those knives where if you want to do that reverse flick, you don't engage it with your fingernail. Engage it with the meat of your finger and then just sort of push up just ever so slightly out. And it works. Perfect. The detent's great. Nice, clicky, snappy action. But at the same time, it's easy to disengage. And it's actually kind of nice to just wheel out. It's, I mean, all of the little elements that people look for, you know, however you're going to open it. This is nice. This is not a fall shut knife, right? It's, it's nice and smooth. But it's its own thing, right? Um, but very, very satisfying, completely acceptable given the price and the build. Very happy with that. Let's talk about carry profile. So thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. Look at that. The Spyderco Para 3 actually looks like a hulking monstrous knife compared to the uh, Quiet Carry Waypoint. Come on, camera. Let's go. Wake up. Let's get to work. Um, yeah, this thing is just not a um, not a cumbersome object. In fact, it's basically like a short, thin oval. Um, the uh, Up against the Spyderco PM2 and Para 3, two knives that have awkward carry profiles that nobody ever complains about. You can see there, this thing is just a winner, however you come at it, right? Uh, this is a thin knife. This is a light knife. This is a knife that has an excellent carry profile. Anybody, you know, we're going to weigh it here in a second. Anybody who perceives any amount of excess or unnecessary weight in this knife, I would emphasize to them that the carry profile would make up for that. And by those people, I mean 
fans of the Benchmade Bug Out and Mini Bug Out who think that anything over 1.8 ounces is heavy. This knife has such an amazing carry profile and is so thin that any difference in weight between, you know, <laughs> 1.8 and 2.8 to me at that point is trivial. This is a knife that can be carried in athletic shorts or skinny jeans or and it'll also be right at home in jeans or khakis or you know if you're wearing a suit if you're wearing nice dress clothes um yeah this is just it's too easy to carry um I, I, and i'm happy that it's made out of titanium i i honestly you know taking a look at the inside you can see it's not milled out i i just don't care um this thing is uh just it's made to be carried the only downside is is it's so light and compact that you might forget that it's in your pocket so check your pants before you do your laundry absolutely let's go ahead and do the hardware check here real quick get out my handy dandy wea magnetic uh driver and wea bit selector two items that are extremely inexpensive and extremely recommendable you can find them down in the amazon store that i reference at the beginning of every single video just pull up in the amazon store and click on knife maintenance so checking the pivot I'm just guessing by looking at it that we are looking at T8. Yes, we are. And how about the pocket clip screw back here? Let's see if we can just guide that in. There we go. T8. And I'm guessing the body screw again. If we can get it. Boy, they are perfectly sized. We should come at this where I can see it. Right there. Yeah. T8. Fantastic. You got another T8 pocket clip screw on the other side. That's wonderful. T8 all the way across the board. Minimal hardware. Perfectly, perfectly executed in my opinion. I don't like T6. Uh, T8, you're less likely to strip the head. Good quality tools, even on a Wii. Even, even the Wii heads will strip sometimes on T6. It's not a deal breaker with T6, but this is T8 across the board. You have show side pivot, adjustment side pivot, one pocket clip screw, one body screw, uh, and you've got the uh, opposing side head or the Chicago screw, whatever you can call that. And then the other pocket clips uh, screw. All T8. Ah, perfect. <laughs> no complaints. Absolutely. Let's go ahead and talk about the anatomy here. So there's a bunch of different versions of this knife that you can get, right? They're all very simple. Like people who don't like a very simple aesthetic look, maybe this knife all the way around is not for you. Oftentimes with simplicity comes a, an extremely utilitarian design. And that's what we have here. Um, but you do have a few aesthetic choices. Fortunately, I like uh, knives that are monochromatic, right? So in this case, we have bead blasted, which I'll show you guys up close. Bead blasted with some of my gross fingerprints on it. And then we have a satin finished blade. There's an option for a tumbled blade and a tumbled frame and probably bead blasted and tumbled and blah, blah, blah. You can actually still get these right now at the time of this video. If you're watching this video two years in the future and you're like, Complex, I went to check it out and it's not there. That's because you're watching it two years in the future. But... If you're watching it right now and you go, you know, check out the, the website, uh, there's still some available. A few models are sold out and I would imagine they will continue to sell pretty quickly. They do things in small batch. So if everything becomes sold out, you know, it's it's possible they will continue to make this knife. I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, it's available right now. Bead blasted, satin, tumbled. Uh, there's even one that's got like a colored scale. I'm not sure if that's micarta or if they're adding some sort of coating to aluminum or titanium. I'm not, I'm not really sure there. But yeah, there's a few different choices. I like the bead blasted and the satin. I probably would go tumbled and tumbled, which I think is actually still available. Um, ergonomically, I mean, there's not... So this is a knife that uh, is, is emphasizing, like I said, carryability. That's not really a word, but ease of carry. <laughs> um, so you've got a, a great uh, cutting edge length. Uh, you've got a nice compact size. They didn't make the handle any larger than they thought they needed to. Um, and it's just big enough for me, somebody who wears an XL glove, to get my hand all the way around it. You are sort of confined to this one area right here in this toil, and that, that's, that's fine. Um, the entire uh, handle all the way around, the entire scale is nice and smooth. There's a slight little, just a little teeny tiny point right there. It's not a big deal. You get a close-up right here so you guys can see what it is that I'm referring to. Um, it's just this raised area right here. Um, that's, it's not a big deal. It's just everything else is so smooth that my hand immediately notices that because it doesn't have any other position to be in. Um, is it a reason not to buy the knife? No, not at all. <laughs> I just want to point it out to people. But yeah, this knife is easy to hang onto. You lock in. There's a nice, uh, uh, nice amount of jimping up here where you can uh, lock in and engage. And it feels solid despite being, you know, a really, really, you know, I don't want to say delicate, just very thin profile knife, you know. Um, we have, let me get that fingerprint off of there. Like I said, 
Thumb studs, insanely easy to engage, not bitey. I mean, it's just a, a plain, perfect thumb stud. Uh, the blade is a very simple drop point blade, satin finished. Areas up here, these are all nicely knocked down, no complaints whatsoever. The tip is unbelievably thin and very delicate. This is not a knife that you want to stab into a piece of wood and proceed to pry because you will snap the tip. Don't do that. Vanex, uh, super clean. Like I said, the main feature being um, its stainless properties. Um, also has pretty decent edge retention and I've heard is pretty easy to sharpen. That's pretty cool. That's great as an EDC steel actually because the majority of us don't use our knives hard enough um, to really be able to tell exactly how much excess edge retention we're getting in steels like M4, M390. I know there's a few of you out there who do, but for the most part, no. Um, so the main benefit here is going to be the stainless properties. I don't know about you guys, but I have definitely put non-stainless steels in my pocket and gone out to work on a hot day. Been sweating and Greg grows hands in and out of the pocket, touching, you know, anything that's got moisture on it, right? And then got my pocket knife back out at the end of the day, open it up, and I've seen little spots of surface corrosion. That can happen. Um, now, on steels like M390, S35VN, S30V, blah, 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 uh, stainless steels, right? It's much less likely to happen, but this is even more stainless than those. This is a steel that you, you know, I mean, obviously you should still clean off your blades, but uh, as far as like worrying about whether or not you're going to have corrosion on this thing, it's, it's you basically don't have to worry about it. Um, that and the combination of the liner being LC200N and the frame being titanium, yeah, um, <laughs> corrosion is just basically something that can be put to the back of your mind. Again, you should still maintain your knives, you should still clean them, no matter how stainless everything is, but yeah, that's pretty cool. Edge geometry on this thing. Oh my goodness, did we measure the blade stock thickness? I don't think we did. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Oop, get it zeroed out. Okay, blade stock thickness on this guy. 85 thousandths. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, that is a thin blade stock. Now, you know, you don't have a lot of room to drop towards the cutting edge, but when you start out at 85 thousandths and you don't have a flat that's, you know, the, the flat is in the top quarter of the knife and extends about 80, 85%. There's still quite a bit of room to drop down towards an absolute laser beam of an edge. This might be the, the thinnest behind the edge I've, I've felt on a knife on this channel before. The sentence structure there was awful, but... Yeah, the uh, this knife is thinner behind the edge than I think any that I have shown on the channel up to this point. How's that? My goodness. Yeah, this is a freaking laser beam, guys. I mean, um, this knife, I mean, even if it does start to go, you know, if, if, if it drops down to working edge and then eventually caveman edge, the geometry of this knife alone will still pass through material with efficiency. It may not, you know, at some point, it may go dull enough to where you're not like, you know, slicing through paper like, you know, a hot knife through butter. But can you push this blade through a cardboard box or packaging in the outside of a material, you know, whatever you're trying to get into? Oh, yeah, because it's that thin behind the edge. But the nice thing is when it comes time to sharpen, it shouldn't be that difficult. Excuse me. That's really, really cool. That's something that I, I think is nice and I think is uh, very much uh, appropriate for a lightweight compact EDC tool, which is to a T exactly what this is. This could not be more EDC. I mean, this, so, you know, throw the, the legendary models in, right? Uh, Para 3 Lightweight, 940, bug out, right? Uh, Open L8. A lot of what these knives have in common is either lightweight or excellent carry profile or a combination of both. This is right in there, except that you're getting titanium and you're getting a build that emphasizes corrosion resistance ab above everything else and cutting performance in the form of excellent or very, very thin blade geometry, cutting edge geometry as well, right? Yeah, this is EDC by definition. Oh my gosh, maxed out, right? Now I understand a lot of people like to EDC bigger blades, right? But you know, once uh, if you're looking to just carry a simple cutting tool with you, Right, and it needs to cut, but it needs to stay in your pocket and be, you know, a convenient thing to get out and use and put away, right? And you're just going to be using it for simple tasks. This is, yeah, this is perfect. <laughs> the profile is excellent. These three little dots right here. It's so funny, you know. It's like 
the handle needed something. They could have left it totally blank and it would have been fine, but they decided to just do four little dots there. And you know what? I kind of like it. It's an odd characteristic where every time I see it now, I'm going to go, yeah, it's quiet, Carrie. <laughs> Isn't it on the drift too? Oh, I don't know why they decided to, um, the, the only, the only feature on the entire handle, they decided to do four dots, but I think it's classy. <laughs> I can't tell you exactly why, but I like it. I accept it. Look at that. I don't know why. I mean, it's, you know, it's nice. Um, like I said, minimal hardware. Um, you do have a nice flush titanium backspacer, and I think that looks good. You have a wire clip that can be mounted on the right or left-hand side. Now, this is a right-handed sub countersunk liner lock, however you want to say that. But, you know, as, in terms of, you know, manipulation uh, as a lefty, can you still engage this? Yeah, because they scalloped it on this side too, which is great. So can I do a left-handed reverse flick? Yup, I can do it. I'm right-handed and I can still do it. So left-handed people, you should be able to do it just fine. Um, and I, I, you know, I mean, it's like, well, I still wish it was a left-handed liner lock, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I get it. The wire clip, this is again, one of those models where the wire clip just looks good. It looks appropriate. The entire design is very minimalist, right? Very modern, very, it's like, um, suit and tie modern, right? <laughs> this is, this knife says business executive, uh, but at the same time, minimalist. Um, and the wire clip is that exactly. Uh, it's going to carry deep. It's going to carry tight, um, and uh, it's it's very simple. It's going to stay in place, you know, given the design, and it's one T8 screw, and you just pull it out and put it in the other side. Perfect. Uh, this knife is wandering right now, but I have noticed that it's it's just needing a turn of the pivot head. Now, I'm not going to add Loctite to anybody else's knife, and it's my understanding that this is very new, and this is often the case with new knives. Um, it doesn't mean that you've got a knife that's bad if you have to adjust it. It just means you need to adjust it and then maybe put a little teeny tiny bit of blue Loctite on it. And we're going to very carefully turn that, get this blade to come back center, which actually that might have done it right there. Now let's check and see if we're smooth. We're a little bit tight here. This knife is one of those knives where the tolerances are so insane. It's hit like the smallest turn, the smallest turn. We'll adjust things. Just gonna, like almost nothing. Yeah, and like literally it just smooth, it was like, it's like 300% smoother, right? It's almost a little bit too smooth. So we're gonna, we're gonna come back just a little bit. I, I'm, I'm happy to put stuff like that. I know some people are like, move on, but I'm happy to have examples like this in my knife review uh, because I want you guys to see, yeah. So now we have perfect centering and the action, yeah, there you go. It's nice and right back to normal can still do this fire and I can still do the reverse flick. So that's great. Um, but yeah, if that happens, don't fret. Just put a little, little tiny bit of blue Loctite on the threads, put it back in, let it sit for 36 hours or so and you should be good to go. Anyways, uh, locks up, um, very solid. I mean, completely solid for how thin, I mean like the surface contact on that little liner lock and a thin blade, you're looking at 40% or so. Are you ready for this? I'm serious. I will always be honest. If I can feel blade play, you guys know, I will tell you, no blade play, none. Absolutely solid up, down, left, and right. Impressive for how thin and how small everything would have to be, right? The amount of surface contact holding those materials together, right? That's a lot of times has a lot to do with whether or not there's play in anything. I mean, there's a lot of other factors, right? But you know, I, I felt play in the Benchmade uh, bug out, the, the 940, most of the variants that I've, that I've handled. Now, this is a much more expensive knife, right? But oftentimes, smaller builds just have a little bit of blade play. Not this guy. At least not the one that I'm handling here. Sorry. This is why I don't like satin blades, guys. Fingerprints. It's just gross. Um, wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. I mean, nitpicks. There's that little area right there that we talked about earlier has an ever so slight point, just a little bit. And yeah, <laughs> the tip is a little bit delicate, but that's gonna be the case on a knife that was designed for slicing efficiency. Um, I don't know that I can complain. Now here's where it's gonna kill it for some people. Uh, this is still a $300 knife. Um, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I can I can see how they got there. I, I think I would have been a lot happier and it would have made a lot more sense to me at about 250. But this, you know, 
there's not a lot of other knives out there that are using Vanex Super Clean right now. I don't know of anybody who's used LC200N on a liner lock. I mean, what they've got here is like the ultimate EDC size and profile mixed with something that is essentially invincible against corrosion resistance and at the same time has an uh, edge geometry that emphasizes cutting performance above anything else that I have ever seen. I mean, the, the sliciness of this thing, the, how thin it is behind the edge, this is a wonderful EDC item. And in my opinion, looks really, really cool. This, I mean, simplicity is off the charts with this guy. And I just love that. I mean, that is just, a, it's just business executive. You know, that's what I think of when I look at this thing. Can I recommend this knife? Yeah, go get it. Because they're going to be gone and then everybody's going to be like, oh, look how cool this is. And they'll be like, well, oh, I didn't get to get one. You know, I mean, that's going to happen. Even if everybody like rushes from my channel to go get it, there's still going to be people saying that. But yeah, these are small batch. And this this thing is bound, you know, in fact, Quiet Carry, obviously on the rise. They've made some really, really cool models. Um, you know, I, I'm going to guess they're going to keep doing it. Um, so hopefully they bring, you know, after this batch sells out, they keep doing more of this and the drift. Um, but yeah, um, if this is an indicator of where they're headed in the future, um, yeah, my, uh, my, my eyes are definitely on quiet carry for sure. Um, this is really, really cool. It's a little bit more pricey than I would like it to be, but I think I, I can see this. And to me, it would be worth the $300 price point. Um, so this is going to go on my most recommended playlist. Uh, check that out along with all the other gear that I recommend. But guys, I think that's going to be pretty much it for today's review. Like I said, if you're still here and you haven't done so yet, go over to DTOM Knives and Gear on YouTube and subscribe to his YouTube channel. Let's support some new reviewers. It's always nice uh, to get people to check out some other channels in the knife community or the YouTube knife community. So absolutely. Thanks again, DTOM Knives and Gear. That's going to be pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.